Hello and welcome to the shop. Tonight I've got a beautiful piece of Australian teak sent to me by Bob Stembridge. And what I'm going to do is I got a brand new kit from Rockler. It's called the Manhattan. Uh, it's a 2764 inch tube. It's a lot like the Sierra or the Wall Street that I've been turning. Uh, and I'm going to turn this blank and I'm going to mate it up to a beautiful Manhattan pin kit. Here's a closer look at the pin kit that I'll be using. It is the Manhattan. It's from Rockler and it's gold with the black accents. First thing we want to do is we need to get our blank marked. I'm going to go ahead and lay my tube on here. You'll notice my tube, I've already scuffed it up with a piece of sandpaper. You want to do that so the glue will stick a little better. We'll come over here and we'll get us a hash mark and we're ready to take this to the bandsaw and get it trimmed up. Now I want to point out something. This particular tube, notice that right there, it is damaged. Now it came out of the bag that way, so I'm not sure if it was damaged before I bought it or if I damaged it when I brought it home from Richardson, Texas uh, from the Rockler store. But what we're going to do is, this is not a problem. I'm going to go get my punches. We're going to run a 2764 cents punch up through the center of this tube and we're going to true up this tube. I went through my punches and I found the one that fits perfectly inside of my tube. Pushing it all the way down to the end and you can see I just forced it through. The brass is very soft and what I like to do is I like to roll the punch and tap the brass and what that will do for me, you can see how easily this punch goes through the tube. You can see now that I've rounded out the end of that tube. We will have no issue using this tube to make this pin. With my blank marked, we're ready to go ahead and cut it to length. We're ready to turn this blank. You're going to have to excuse the background noise. It is 98 degrees out today and I have an air conditioner and a fan both blowing directly on me. Um, but I'm going to get this piece of teak turned. I'm really excited about the prospect of what it's going to look like. So let's get busy. I sanded the blank through 400 grit. Now I'm going to use a little denatured alcohol. I always like to rub with the grain first to clean out any debris. Look at that. That's all coming out from within the grain. And then I'll turn the lathe on for a second and just sort of run the uh, damp paper towel or the denatured alcohol soaked paper towel back and forth over the blank. That does a nice job cleaning it. You'll notice I've already got my nonstick bushings on. A little bit of uh, build up there, CA build up and um, I don't touch the blank. Once I have put these bushings on and once I've run the denatured alcohol to clean it, you don't want to touch it. Your hands have oil in them, you could be sweating, you could have dust on your hands, anything at all on your hands will be transferred to the blank and will be transferred under your C or will be encased in your CA glue finish. So don't touch it. This teak is absolutely beautiful. You'll notice there are a lot of little voids between the grains 
Now what that means is we may end up having to apply additional coats of medium. And one thing you might see me do is I may get four or five coats of medium on there and I may decide to go ahead and micro mesh. Uh, and, and the reason why is as you build this up, you're also building up the outside around the divot, which makes it look like the divot just keeps moving up with the layers of CA. So by going back and by micro meshing it down, you lower or reduce the surface diameter, uh, which basically allows you to come back then and put a couple of more coats and fill uh, that final divot. I know that sounds a little bizarre, but I think it'll make sense as we go forward. Let's get the first coat on it, and this will give us a good idea of what the blank's gonna look like. Take a look at that. It's gonna be beautiful. I'm gonna shut the camera off. We're gonna go ahead and get uh, four more coats of thin on. We'll come back and uh, apply the first coat of medium, and we may apply two or three coats uh, on camera just to kind of show you um, how that goes. I've got four coats of thin CA on my blank. Normally I put five, but it's looking pretty good. It's pretty even. I'm gonna go ahead and move to the medium. Um, you can kind of see the little divots in the grain. That's what we're gonna keep an eye on. So let's go ahead and get our first coat of medium on the blank. You wanna make sure when you're wiping the CA on that you wipe past the end of the blank. And the reason why is if, if you don't, sometimes you'll get a little buildup at the ends and, and you just don't want that because then your pin is not gonna fit nicely with the pin components. Take a quick peek. I'm watching, see the reflection of light? That's what I'm watching as I spin the blank. You can look in that light reflection and you can see the divots and really I don't see any super deep ones, which is good. That leads me to believe that uh, two, maybe three more coats, we might be able to level this blank out. All right, I'm gonna shut the camera off. I'm gonna get at least two more coats on here. Then we'll come back and take a look at our blank. I've applied three coats of medium CA. And as I spin the blank, once again, I'm watching the lighted area. I am not seeing any deep divot marks. So it's that's telling me that the CA has done a really good job of filling the grain. What I'm gonna do now is this is the very last coat. On the last coat, it's been spinning for about five minutes, but I'll always touch it up with just a shot of activator. Uh, and that's just the last coat to make sure I take the tack off the surface because the last thing you wanna do is bring a micro mesh pad over put it against here and find out it's still a tiny bit tacky, you're gonna destroy all of your work. This is the only time I use activator. The rest of the coats, between all of the coats, I avoid activator and just let the blank spin. That should do it. My blank is now dry. What I'm gonna do is swap these nonstick bushings out for my turning bushings, and we're gonna micro mesh this blank. I'm not entirely sure, but I believe this may be the first Manhattan kit that I've ever assembled. I just picked these up at Rockler, and I don't think I've put any of them together yet. This blank turned out absolutely stunning. I'm just looking for a good spot to put the clip, and I'm thinking right here. There's really nothing that I want to cover up. The entire blank is just gorgeous from one end to the other. Whoops, we gotta be very careful there. You see how I started to kind of go a little crooked? I let it get away from me. I'm gonna flip it over to where the ball of the cap is in the, the back ram and the front ram is pressing against the wood. That's gonna give me a little better control. There we go. All right. Bring that straight up for you to take a look at. And what I like, see it's got that little, that little lip there. Notice how it's perfectly aligned with the blank. To me, that's how you know you've done a nice job whenever everything lines up just perfect. Take our nib and our spring, slide our refill in, put that into the nib, thread the transmission. This assembles just like a Wall Street, and I've become a huge fan 
of these style pin kits just because of their simplicity and and they, they're so simple that they're beautiful they accent almost any blank you get a nice solid unbroken blank i'm a big fan take a look there real nice fit along the uh, trim ring turned out to be a relatively beautiful pin i'm very happy I'd like to thank you for joining the shop today. This Australian teak is absolutely stunning. It's really hard to see the the depth of the grain in the uh, in the video, but it's just it's beautiful. There's so much color. It's it's just it's absolutely a gorgeous blank. I had a great time turning it, and I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'd like you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon. Have a great evening, everybody.